let's make the grooviest bass house track that will most certainly make you dance. Yo guys, it's Arcade and today I'm gonna show you how to make a bass house banger. So I say this is bass house, but it also has a little bit of future house and deep house in it. The line between these styles is pretty thin, but yeah, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know. I'm gonna break up this video into a few chapters and explain each element of the song individually. Also, this video is brought to you by Ultrasonic Sounds and I made this entire track using their sample pack that you can get link below. Anyways, let's get started with the most important element, which is the drums. So most people just make a basic drum rhythm and call it a day, but that's a big mistake. You actually want to have a lot of variations of the drums, a lot of change ups, because the drums drive the whole song. So you definitely want to keep the listener interested. So the first thing I'm going to do in FL Studio is increase the swing. This function is a lifesaver. It will basically make the drums and other sounds more groovy. Here's an example with the hi-hat. Without the swing, it's like this. And with the swing, it's like this. So right off the bat, you can hear the grooviness and that's the swing. So you want to have that enabled throughout the whole song. But if you want to disable it for certain sounds, what you can do is just click on the sound, go to the settings right here and lower the swing. By default, it is enabled on all of the sounds. So that is how you disable it for a specific sound if you want to. Now let's set up our drum beat. So I already selected my samples and all of these are from the regardless Deep House sample pack from Ultrasonic. And you definitely want to have some quality sounds. So this is the kick I'm using. Pretty basic. Now an offbeat open hi-hat. And as you can see, if I do a short click, it plays a little bit. And if I do a long click, you can hear the whole sample. The way you do this is you go to envelope, you enable the envelope, you lower all of these and increase the sustain. This is really important because then you can actually make shorter and longer notes, and it will sort of add to the groove. Here's an example of an open hi-hat. We do a rhythm like this. We go to piano roll for the hi-hat and make different length notes to add more variation and to make it more human. And you can do this throughout the whole song. I heard Disclosure once changed the length of each open hi-hat in his song. So every hi-hat was a little bit different. So that's a little trick that you can use for better drums. Now we can also add this short hi-hat, just like offbeat as well. We can also add it here. And then maybe even some tambourines. So yeah, here is an example of a nice hi-hat loop with the drum kick. And of course, I made a few more, so we have some variations. So here's another one. Again, different length open hi-hats. Another one. Another one. And that's pretty much it for the hi-hats. Now let's move on to the clap, which is also really important. So the clap is really simple. You just put it on these beats right here. So it goes well with the kick. And for the sounds, I'm using this clap, then a snare, which I lowered by 10 keys. Otherwise, it was like a pretty sharp snare, but I wanted something like deep. So you just lower it. A simple trick that you can use to like transform your sample into a completely new one, pretty much. And then we have this clap as well. And that results in this nice clap. So yeah, that's the clap. And one more thing you want to add is some percussion. So I went with a simple snare in between the claps. And to make it more interesting, I add this variation of the snare. So how do you do this? You just hold the Alt key when adding notes. So you can do like a lot of them one after another. And then I also adjust the volume here to have this nice little machine gun snare, I guess. So once you have that, this is how it sounds. And as you can hear, the different lengths open hi-hats are really nice. So another thing to add to spice up your drums are some loops, like this top loop, which adds to the groove of the already existing hi-hats we have. So some shakers and stuff like that. And one more sound that I added to make the drums more interesting is just plain white noise. So I have this white noise down filter. And again, I use the envelope and enable the sustain only so I can make different length notes. And you can just use it as little white noise hits. And that's exactly what I did here. 
sort of like offbeat white noise that just sort of fills in some gaps. Then here as well. And yeah, as you can see in the arrangement, I have some empty spaces here. So what you want to do sometimes with the drums is while they are playing and repeating, sometimes at the fourth repetition, just turn them off for a bit, you know, like this. Because the quiet parts actually create this nice tension. Also make sure to include some fills and it doesn't have to be anything complicated. Like right here, I just do this little snare and in the piano roll, you can also control the pan. Just go to note pan. So as you can see, this one will be on the right and this one on the left. Play with the drums, use different octaves for the drums when doing fills and create some really simple but effective fills. There is another one here, which is my favorite. So all I did is added one more clap before the actual clap right here, two of these. And then the snare right at the end. It's a variation in the drums, but it also works as a fill. So yeah, make sure to play around with the drums and just by doing these fills and variations, you actually make your song so much better. So the drums, the first element of the song. Now let's move on to the second one, which is the bass. So I have a few bass lines in this track, but the first one is a really basic deep bass. So I'm using this serum preset from the regardless sample pack and it's called arms. This sample pack actually has really cool presets and a lot of variety as well. And here is the simple bass line that I created. So this is for the beginning of the song and I stay on the same note throughout the whole bass line. The only thing I do is switch between different octaves. So here is how it sounds. So yeah, this bass line is really simple. That's why coming back to the drums is why you have so much variety in the drums because they keep the song going even though this bass line is pretty much the same throughout the whole song. One thing I did do to make this bass line moving is automate the sustain. So by automating the sustain here, we actually open up the filter because this envelope is tied to the cutoff. So pretty much we open up the cutoff and it sounds like this. So yeah. At the beginning, it's sort of closed off and at the end, really open. With the drums, it sounds like this. So yeah, as you can hear, we have the drums and one bass sound and already it's a pretty interesting song. And as I mentioned before, the quiet parts and the fills just sort of keep you guessing and make you want more. So definitely use the quiet parts to your advantage. For the effects, I just boosted some of the high frequencies on the bass, so it's more deep. And one more important effect, of course, is the side chain. And I'm using Fruity Love Filter here. I actually have a tutorial on how to do side chaining with Fruity Love Filter, but you can also use Kickstart or whatever side chaining method you prefer. If you don't know how to do side chaining, check out the link below. I will put a link to a tutorial on how to do that. And that is it for this bass. Now, staying on the topic of bass, we do have one more major bass change in this song. This is probably like the drop, the main part, and I have this bass right there. So it's the same sound as the previous one, but I actually created a melody with it. So when creating the bass melody, it's good to start basic and then add more notes. So what I would do is just, for example, put in notes like this. Start simple and then add some more filler notes, you know. Something like this. This is just an example, but start with the main notes of the song and then add in some filler notes. If you really don't know where to start with the melody, you can also use helpers here in FL Studio. Go to view, scale highlighting and choose what scale you want to work in and what key you want to work in. So for example, major D or C, whatever, right? And then the highlighted notes you see are the ones you can actually be using and stay in the same key. So you won't like add in some notes that don't fit. And a little trick that I'm using here, just right click on these letters instead of left clicking so you don't close this window. So yeah, someone left that tip on the previous video, so thank you for that. But other than that, just start with the basic notes and then add in some filler notes and you're gonna have something like this. 
So that is it for this bass. Now let's move on to another element, which is the main melody. In this case, we have sort of a counter melody to the bass that I just showed you. And it sounds like this. So yeah, the sound I'm using is called lead jump, really cool, dirty lead. And as I said, we have what's called the counter melody. What it means, it sort of follows the same rhythm as the bass, but the melody itself is a little bit different. It sort of goes against the bass. So the bass goes up and this goes down. And together they create a really nice harmony. So when you're trying to make a counter melody, just follow the same rhythm of the bass, but switch up the melody. And together with the drums, it sounds like this. And yeah, there we have it. That's the counter melody. Now in the second part of the drop, we start without the drums. That actually also creates some nice tension. So when the drop actually hits, it gives it more power. And then I added another sound here, which is this bass or lead. It's like an organ bass, more subtle. And I'm actually going to be adding more sounds to this second drop, which I'm going to talk about right now. So the next element is actually vocal chops. And I'm going to show you a really cool way on how to make vocal chops right now. So I took some vocal cuts from the sample pack, like these. So I took three of them, this one, this one, and this one. So what you want to do is switch in between them from time to time. So I have this one playing here. So the next one will be this one and the next one will be this one. And whenever one of them is playing, make sure the other ones aren't. So that way you get actually a really nice cut vocal that is sort of random like this. One thing that helps with this is enabling ghost channels. So go to view ghost channels, that way you can see the other notes from the other samples. So yeah, right now it's a pretty bland vocal chop, right? So to make it more interesting, we're gonna add some effects. So the first one being sound goodizer, just to sort of add some power to it. Then I'm adding EQ to boost the high frequencies and lower the low frequencies. So it's more clean. Then some reverb, a lot of reverb actually, two seconds decay. Now it's more interesting. And also I added transient processor and increased the release. That means the vocal sort of plays longer. So the initial hit is not as hard, but the decay and sustain is a little bit more powerful if we increase the release. But the most important thing that I added to make a really cool vocal chop and the way you can make many vocal chops in a matter of seconds is gross beat. And I chose this complex two and transgate one. So you just go with these two, for example, you can do any combination of these and it's gonna sort of cut the vocal even more and it's almost sort of random. So you don't know what you're gonna get, but this is how it sounds once the gross beat is on. <laughs> So yeah, more choppy and interesting. So now with the vocal chops, it sounds like this. Definitely adds nice atmosphere into it, like really spacious vocal chops. Now we have two more elements to cover. And the first one is sound background melodies. So if you feel like your song is too repetitive, just add some melody in the background that adds something new to it. Here's the melody that I added. And as you can hear, I also automated the pan. So once it's playing in the left and once it's playing on the right. And the sound I'm using is called Ode. And again, if you want to get any of these sounds, check out the sample pack link below. So we have this really simple melody and it sounds like this with the rest of the song. I used it in the first repetition with the basic bass. <laughs> Here is how the melody looks. It's sort of offbeat. And every time you are making a melody, you want it to be like resolved at the end. It's almost like a question and answer with the melodies. So this is the question. And this would be the answer. So it sort of like gives you this satisfaction because you know the melody ended there. So the last background sound that I added is just this string, which is just an ambience sample. And it sounds like this. Not much to it, but it just repeats in the background and adds a little bit of something to the whole drop. Just fills in some space 
And it sounds like this. That is the background sound. So now to the last element of the song, and that is the one that ties everything together. And that is the effects. So we have some standard stuff like crashes and this ambience and some down filters. So you sort of want to use these on like the beginning of each four repetitions. Then another effect I forgot to mention, which is also from the ambient sounds. And I use it with the fills as well. And one more effect that I have here is this reversed vocal. And then the actual vocal chop starts. And yeah, that is all the elements of a bass house track that you need to know about. At least that is all the elements for this track. Of course, you could add more or less. Now let's have a listen to the finished result. And of course, do some colors here. And there you have it. Again, thank you to Ultrasonic for sponsoring this video. If you want to get the sounds that I use to create this entire track and more, then check out the sample pack link below. There's actually a lot of high quality samples, presets, acapellas, FL Studio project files, and more. So check it out. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.